Welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I forgot to say this on Friday, but happy March, everybody. We made it through February. Come on, it's such a, an accomplishment to make yeah. it through February, you know? Man, that was a tough month. Tough. Also, happy budget day, John. Oh, Do yeah. you know today's the budget day? Budget day, yeah. The president uh, finally released his 2020 spending plan, which he's calling a budget for a better America. <laughs> Promises kept, taxpayers first. Okay. Um, first of all, pick a slogan. <laughs> Just one. That title's got a little junk in the trunk. Uh, yeah. But he overdoes everything. It's always too much. Originally, Trump wanted to call it a budget for a better America. Finger licking good. We are farmers. But I'm loving it. <laughs> and Medley. the reviews are already in. House Democrats rave. Dead on arrival. No chance of passing and divorced from reality. Is there anything he won't divorce? <laughs> now, Whoa, Democrats. Nah. Democrats have a very good reason for opposing this budget. It includes a request for at least $8.6 billion more in funding for a wall. Yeah. <laughs> you were a little late, but thank you very much. <laughs> We've been here before. You know the old saying, fool me once. Wait a second, you didn't fool me the first time. You're already trying it again? <laughs> you can't. But Trump's budget isn't supposed to appeal to Democrats. It's for his base in the run-up to 2020. To that end, Trump has launched a massive re-election effort led by 2020 campaign manager and time-traveling medieval monk, <laughs> Brad Parscale. Parscale brags, we are creating the largest campaign operation in American history, an unstoppable apparatus that will follow and implement President Trump's strategy to great effect. Yes, you know you're the good guys when you boast about having the unstoppable apparatus. <laughs> Every citizen will come under its omnipotent sway. Once we implement Protocol Omega, we will get out the vote without mercy. Thanks to the unstoppable apparatus. <laughs> Did I black out? Did I black out? Of course, before it can crush us under its iron wheels of destiny, the unstoppable apparatus must be fed. Trump's already raking in money. On Friday night, he spoke to Republican donors at Mar-a-Lago, and uh, things got a little weird. You remember last week when Trump met with Apple CEO Tim Cook, uh, and, and he did this. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. <laughs> yes. Very much. That's not his name. Very much. No, it's just Tim Apple. Yeah. <laughs> One of the three famous Apple boys. Tim, <laughs> Tim Pine and Cran. <laughs> uh, Tim, 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 Tim made good. Uh, let us sink in. Let us sink in. Now, okay, so it was funny that he did this, you know, ha ha. We certainly made our jokes. Tim Cook actually changed his Twitter handle to Tim Apple. <laughs> All in good fun. Yeah. All in good fun. And it was over. Mm -hmm. But now it has reblossomed <laughs> into an ongoing national scandal that we're calling Applegate. <laughs> Not Christina. <laughs> She's a national treasure. Now, uh, at this self-same aforementioned fundraiser, of which I was just speaking of, Trump resurrected the Tim Apple controversy by telling the donors that he actually said Tim Cook Apple really fast. And the cook part of the sentence was soft, but all you heard from the fake news was Tim Apple. <laughs> Mr. President, words don't just disappear <laughs> from the middle of sentences, unless it's CBS bleeping me when I say excuses like this are insane. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear that. Did I say appling insane? <laughs> we'll never know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's not appled in the head. Let's... 
Let's slow that clip down. Let's slow that clip way down and boost the volume so we can hear the middle part. We appreciate it very much, Tim. Cook, the CEO of Apple. Okay, checks out. Checks out. I heard it that time. That's it. My apologies. I, I apologize. Heard it that time. I, we all we were wrong. Damn you, fake news. That checks out. Even Trump's own donors, who had to donate at least six figures to get into this event where he told this lie, knew the story was nuts. One of these donors told reporters, I just thought, why would you lie about that? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> yes, I was there at the donor event, and I turned to my wife and I said, this man will lie about literally anything. <laughs> Hand me my checkbook, Trump 2020. <laughs> <laughs> big check, big check. <laughs> no one believed his lie, so Trump has already released Lie 2.0. This morning he tweeted, At a recent roundtable meeting of business executives and long after formally introducing Tim Cook of Apple, I quickly referred to Tim plus Apple as Tim slash Apple as an easy way to save time and words. The fake news was disparagingly all over this, and it became yet another bad Trump story. <laughs> so, so, after no one believed that he secretly whispered <laughs> his name and title, Trump claimed he was shortening it to save time. Time he could be spending with his kids, because, <laughs> you know, on their deathbed, I think everyone says the same thing. I have only one regret, that I wasted so much of my life on saying last names <laughs> instead of occupations. <laughs> Don't make the same mistakes I did, little Johnny Paper Route. Very deeply into character there for just a moment. <laughs> now, at the fundraiser, Trump also rolled out some brand new opponent nicknames. He called Biden the dummy. It's ballsy, considering Trump's running mate is a mannequin. <laughs> Mother. Mother. Trump's also doing some thoughtful rebranding, revealing that instead of Crazy Bernie, he now calls Sanders the Nutty Professor. <laughs> nice. Topical. Really going after the youth vote with his 50-year-old reference. And he's right, Bernie Sanders looks exactly like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> hey, lady, the 1% control the 90% of the wealth. Oh, Dean, tuition should be free for everybody. Health care is a hoiden. With the hay and the nice and the love. <laughs> Trump also was a little bit bummed out about Elizabeth Warren saying his attacks on her took her out really early and that as a result he wanted to save his most withering lines about other Democrats for later in the primary. Timing, no, it's important. Timing is everything. Okay, I'm waiting till I address the UN General Assembly before I call the former governor of Colorado, John Lix's pooper. Oops. <laughs> I broke it out too early. I just can't turn this thing off. <laughs> now, on his way to Mar-a-Lago, Trump stopped in Alabama to tour the tornado damage there, and he, he caught some heat for signing something for his supporters. Bibles. It's a real collector's item. Not everyone has a Bible signed by a president. Ah! 